Welcome back to Midweek Encouragement with First Church of God. I'm Pastor Kevin, and I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I hope that uh, these words that I share with you will be an encouragement to you as we continue to look at, at one of my favorite topics, and that is hope. I believe that God calls us all to be dealers of hope. And at times, though, our hope tank can get tapped and drained and strained, and we need to refill. And I hope that today we can refill your hope tank a little bit. I'm reminded of a story about a young woman that was driving her grandfather to his town, and as they were driving, a storm came up, and the rain was coming down very strong. Windshield wipers were having troubles keeping up with the storm, and she was getting very nervous in her driving. She speaks to her grandfather and says, Grandpa, don't you think we should pull over and stop? And Grandpa says, keep going. She slows the car down even more because the rain is pouring down really hard and making the road hard to see. And she's being very cautious. And she says again, Grandpa, should we stop? And he says, no, keep going. And after a while, the storm began to let up and they were able to carry on and get to their destination a little later than planned, but safely there. And the story here is to remind us that we have to drive through the storm to get out of the storm. We don't want to stay in the storm. As Christ followers, we're all going to find ourselves in one of three locations when it comes to storms. We are either going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. And the most important thing that we can do is press on through the storm. Don't quit. The storms may seem to drain all of our hope, but Christ is our hope. It isn't a matter of how close you are to Jesus. Storms will happen around you. The disciples had to be the closest friends of Jesus when he was alive. And, and look what happened in their life. Matthew chap, or Mark chapter 4 is a great passage of scripture. We start in verse 35. It says, that day when evening came, he and his disciples, uh, he, he, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the winds, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. The seasoned fishermen didn't check the weather. They didn't check the sky. They simply did as Jesus said. They were doing all the things Christ followers should do. Reading their Bible, listening to God's word, going to church and doing what Jesus said. But the storm came up anyway. Have you ever experienced a, a furious squall while doing exactly what you felt God wanted you to do? Following Jesus doesn't make you exempt from the storms and give you calm waters, but calm waters never made a sailor. So many of the heroes of the Bible face storms in their life. I think maybe all of them face storms in their life. Not all of the storms were caused by them or initiated by them. Think about Joseph. Joseph was lied about and he went to prison. Uh, his, his brothers uh, made it seem like he was murdered. There was Ruth. She lost her father-in-law, her brother-in-law, and her husband and moved into a town and a group of people that she was a stranger to. Some would say they were stuck, but they had been obedient to God. They found, like all of us do, that you can be in two places at once. You can be in the will of God and you can be in a furious squall of, uh, of what appears to be hopelessness. Keep in mind, God has a purpose in our storms, to grow us, shape us, and show him. Notice the verse that says there were other small boats. This isn't put on a happy face and weather the storm, but allow your faith to shine in the midst of the storm. Be a lighthouse in a thunderstorm and lightning. This is one of the reasons God allows the storms. When the disciples went to Jesus, look where they found him, in the back of the boat, head on a cushion, sleeping. What's at the back of the boat? It's the stern. It's the rudder. It's the place of control. And it's hard to have hope when you're in a, uh, a, a hope and faith when you're in a sinking boat with a sleeping Jesus. The storms may try to sink us, but God allows the storm to reveal to us that uh, so that we will learn to know Him. The strength we gain from the storm depends on how we view them and how we respond to them in the middle of them. Being in a storm isn't designed for fun, but for faith and hope to grow. 
Keep this in mind, whenever or wherever your storm is, you are not alone. Jesus promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And remember, our lifeguard walks on water and is known to part the water. So you won't go down if you keep your eyes on him. What other small boats are around you that you can give hope to today? How can you give them hope in their storm or in the middle of your storm? One of the ways to is to be the flesh of Jesus. Maybe it's making a plate of cookies and delivering to somebody that's going through a difficult time. Maybe it's just being there for somebody. Maybe it's picking up the phone and making a phone call and saying, hey, I was thinking of you today. I just hope you're having a great day. Maybe it's putting a post-it note on somebody's door or on the windshield of the car saying, hope you have a great day. And I too hope that you are blessed by today and find somebody to pour hope into because their hope tank and your hope tank needs it. This is Pastor Kevin Klaus. Have a great day.